At this point, we move on. At this point, we come to the time in our show where we make sure you are up to speed and well-informed with all of the important news stories that you might have missed during the week because I know all of you are just so, so busy with your rat race of a life, as we all are, so I try to do my part to help you just a little bit, help you take a look at some of those important, earth-shattering news stories you may have missed. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for That Was The Week That Was. First of all, we go to foxnews.com. Headline, United Airlines flies woman to San Francisco instead of France. United Airlines has found itself apologizing yet again, this time for sending a French woman on a 3,000-mile trip in the wrong direction. Lucy Bahatukili, God only knows if I'm pronouncing that right, was recently scheduled to fly from Newark, New Jersey to Paris but instead found herself flying to San Francisco after she was inadvertently allowed to board the wrong plane, reports WABC. According to Bahakatukli, whatever the hell her name is, who only speaks French and allowed her niece to speak on her behalf, the airline changed the flight's gate at the last minute and failed to notify the passengers via email. Furthermore, Bahakatukli claims the airline did not announce the gate change in French despite the original flight being bound for parents. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're in an American airport, honey. Granted, I know that Newark, New Jersey looks a lot more like a third world country than it actually does the United States, but you are in an American airport. Why on earth would you think someone would make an announcement in French? This is America. Learn to speak English if you come here. Even if you're just vacationing. If they would have made the announcement in French, she would have moved gates by Hatukaki Lili's niece. Diane Miantasoko told WABC. Bahuktukukili, not knowing any better, gave her ticket to the gate agent who then scanned it and allowed whatever her name is to board. Now, don't get me wrong. This is a pretty heinous mistake, I'll grant you. And United Airlines has certainly had their share of uh, negative publicity as of late, am I right? But of all the problems of all the controversies that you know maybe this one isn't so bad i mean after all is there really that much of a difference between san francisco and paris i mean you know, gay paris and gay san francisco what's the difference i mean both are places especially after this little election in france last weekend both places are are the type of folks that well they're just multicultural and tolerant and diverse and they welcome all the Muslim thugs and criminals who want to kill their native populations. Hey, there's not much difference at all. You know, San Francisco's a sanctuary city and, well, Paris is once again a bunch of surrender monkeys allowing the Muslims in. Not much difference at all. So yeah, it's not a good look. But at least Miss Pahuka Tiki or whatever the hell her name is At least she didn't have to undergo a bunch of culture shock landing in San Francisco. She's got to be used to that kind of garbage. (laughs) Next story from the Belleville News Democrat. By the way, have you ever noticed how you never see newspapers with the word Republican in the title or the word conservative? And you wonder why newspapers are a dying form of communication. From the Belleville News Democrat. Woman sues Missouri police agencies over sons chase death. From Kansas City, Missouri. The mother of one of three men killed during a 2014 police chase is suing police agencies involved in the Missouri pursuit, insisting her son was an innocent bystander in the vehicle and had begged police to call off the freeway chase. Toya Steed's lawsuit alleges Missouri State Highway Patrol troopers and Peebley officers negligently caused the death of, of Lavoy Savala Steed, who said she told her by telephone during the Interstate 55 chase south of St. Louis the pursuers were ag- aggravating matters. The faster they chase us, the faster this dude goes, the lawsuit alleges Lavoy Steed told his mother of the fleeing SUV driver before that vehicle crashed, ending the 25-mile chase involving speeds that reached 125 miles an hour. The lawsuit, filed Thursday, also alleges the pursuers used excessive force and had reckless disregard for the risk of injury possible in such a chase. It seeks at least $75,000 in damages. 
Associated Press call seeking comment from Peabody Police were directed to that city's legal counsel who didn't return messages left Friday. The Highway Patrol also didn't respond to requests for comment. The patrol was said an officer initially stopped the SUV driven by 18-year-old Jeremy Good. There's a ironic last name. On I-55 for traveling at speeds exceeding 90 miles per hour. But Good then sped away, launching the chase in which he three times managed to elude spike strips. Authorities laid in his path in hopes of flattening the SUV's tires. Along the way, the lawsuit judges alleges Lavoy Steed called his mother, telling her Good wouldn't let him or the other two passengers out of the vehicle. Toya Steed said she reported that to a 911 dispatcher, then called her son back and heard her beg Good to stop running man and to let them out. Mama, he still won't stop. Are they going to stop chasing us? The lawsuit alleges the voice he told his mother. Police tell them to stop chasing us. He was still on the phone with his mother when the SUV crashed, killing him, the lawsuit says. Now, hold up here, folks. Don't get me wrong. This sounds like a, a tragedy on some level. I don't deny that. But why are you blaming the police for uh, the, your kid's death? Why don't you blame the idiot he was riding with? Or she, I don't know if that name is female or male. That's beside the point. The bottom line is, I know that there are some municipalities that have pretty strict rules for when you call off a chase. But I don't think that's a good idea. Remember, anyone who runs away from police is by definition a criminal. You are not allowed to try and escape police. You are not allowed, it's not legal to try and evade police. So if you run away, you are a criminal. And as such, as a law-abiding citizen, as a man whose tax dollars go to the police for them to help protect me and my property, I want them to chase that criminal. I want them to bring them to justice any way they can. If it were up to me, high-speed chases would never be called off. And you've already seen this kid avoided spike strips three times, so he's obviously a dangerous man. What happens if they if they stop that chase? Well, it's possible that this uh, this kid lives, yes. But it also is likely that the criminal gets away. It is high time in this country to take law and order seriously. And I'm sorry your kid died, but if you'll pardon my saying so, maybe your kid should have shows better friends to begin with. Blame the nut knucklehead that was driving that SUV, not the police who were trying to bring him to the justice he deserved. And finally this week, from Breitbart, headline, Man spends over $32,000 to become trans-species elf. A 25-year-old cosplay merchandise seller from Argentina has spent over $32,000 in his efforts to become a trans-species elf. The $32,000 surgery included jaw liposuction, a nose job, hair removal of his entire body, and eye color changing operations, but his quest is not over yet. Luis Padron, am I saying that with a proper accent? Luis Padron, who allegedly became obsessed with elves and other fantasy beings after being bullied as a child, also spends over $5,000 per month on different specialist creams, dyes, treatment, and SPF 100 sun cream. Next on Padron's list to become a complete elf is surgery to make his ears pointed, the removal of four ribs, a face and eye lift, hair implants for a heart-shaped hairline, and a limb lengthening operation to make him six foot five inches tall. I want to be an elf, an angel, and a fantasy being. My aim is to look inhuman, ethereal, graceful, and delicate. Oh my god. Uh, you're probably going to look like a few other things in, in, in addition to that. Uh, Padron told the Daily Mail, I have my own beauty ideal and want to achieve that no matter what. I want to have my ears cut to become pointy like an elves, my jaw to look more sharp like a diamond, a facelift and an eye lift to give my eyes a cat-like shape. I am also considering having muscle implants too, he continued, adding that there's also a surgery to make you taller and I will remove four of my ribs too so that I can shape my waist to make it thinner. People have stared at me ever since I was a teenager, so it's very normal to me now. I like people staring at me and don't care what they think. Whoa! Whoa! Did, 
do you, in the midst of all this crap, did, did you just catch the irony in that last sentence? I like people staring at me and don't care what they think. Uh, that's kind of an oxymoron. And when you actually stop to think about it, this this story is bizarre as it is. It, 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 and in some strange ways, it kind of encapsulates all this trans whatever stuff we've going on in, today and all this... You know, all this push for, for kids to become gay and lesbian and the L, to join the LGBT, ABCD, EFG community and all of that. I mean, don't get me wrong. If this dude wants to spend his own money to, you know, to, to mangle himself, I guess whatever, you know. I'm kind of surprised a Australia or a South American coast player would have that much money to begin with. But I guess he's getting the money from somewhere. I don't know. So, I don't care if he spends his money on what he wants, but I, I, I think in the midst of this diatribe of his, he has, he's kind of hit to the, the heart of what's going on with the snowflake generation now. I mean, they, they like people staring at them and they don't care what you think. It all comes down to a shrinking grasp on reality for this generation, doesn't it? The real world is not is not something that not something that they, they aspire to, something they feel constrained by. They can't live in reality. They don't have the skills to live in reality. They're afraid to live in reality. So they've got to try to create a reality of their own where the real world never enters, no matter how much it costs, no matter how much how in danger it puts them with all of their acceptance and tolerance of these dangerous cultures that are out there. No matter how against the instincts that humans have always had that these ideas might be. Oh no, the real world is a place they just can't handle living. They have to create a world of their own. Folks, that's what we're dealing with these days. And I know this story is kind of a ridiculous one. But psychologically, there's a lot in common that Elfman here has in common with snowflakes and young socialists here in America and across the world. Now, if that's not sobering, I don't know what is. And with that, you are officially up to speed. You've heard all the stories you need to hear. You know all you need to know. That was the week that was.